Hey YouTube, Roger Wendell here, aka Zeke Zilch, with another DIY solar charging demonstration. In this case, I'm trying to emphasize an inexpensive, effective, efficient way to charge deep cycle batteries. In this case, I'm charging a deep cycle marine battery that I purchased from Walmart for $62 US about three years ago. It's worked well, it's endured numerous charges and discharges, and continues to perform adequately. And I don't like to particularly endorse any particular store, model, make, or brand, but in this case I'm always happy to disclose where I got a pretty good deal on something that turned out to be reliable. In this case, this Deep Cycle Marine battery powers uh, my QRP, or low power amateur radio equipment, some reading lamps and other low power applications indoors. And I want to emphasize that aspect of it. I'm charging the battery outdoors because when you do charge a battery, it generates a lot of toxic and noxious gases uh, that can be offensive or harmful to pets and people. So whenever possible, I recommend you charge outdoors unless you have a way to really ventilate the battery and charging system. In this case, when the battery is fully charged, I simply disconnect it from the system, lift it by this handle, and carry it indoors where I plug it in and use it. Um, something you want to take into consideration is the National Electric Code properly wiring batteries and systems. And in this case, I have an inline fuse. I've opened it up here for demonstration purposes, but the idea is to protect the battery and the system in case there's a dead short or any excessive current draw. Something I do on my own is I always try to use a little bit heavier gauge wire to ensure a proper flow of electricity and current and minimizing voltage drops. As far as disconnecting the battery from the system, like I explained a moment ago, in this case I'm using Anderson power pole connectors. Um, they're growing in popularity. They seem to work well enough. They're a little bit expensive, but they, they work, and that's what I'm using at the moment. I highly recommend a charge controller in any system, and again, consult uh, proper electrical authority, the NEC, and other sources to ensure that your charge controller is matched to your system. In this case, I'm using a 30 amp controller that's more than adequate for charging uh, one or two deep cycle batteries for my system. And again, not recommending any particular model or make, but this one cost me around $70 maybe a year or so ago um, at Harbor Freight, but they're available online and you can get better charge controllers or less expensive charge controllers by just looking around. But again, the point is try to size one up for your system. As far as the uh, panel itself, I'm using a very old 40 watt panel that's served me well for the past 10 or 12 years. Um, I live near the Denver area where we have the National Renewable Energy Laboratory in Golden. And at one time, I think about a decade ago, they upgraded their facilities and changed their name to what it is now. It used to be Siri, I believe, but uh, basically flooded the Denver area with a lot of surplus panels. Not sure if this is one of the surplus panels or not, but there were so many panels floating around at the time that prices dropped, and I think I got this one for about $50 US. It's worked really well for the decade or so that I've been using it. It's rated at about 40 watts, probably a little antiquated as newer panels with the same amount of surface area are good for maybe 60 or 65 watts, but this one does the trick. And as far as mounting the panel, and in my case, DIY, keeping it simple, keeping it inexpensive, I'm using a pitchfork, which I've used for years, and the point of the pitchfork is I can simply and easily adjust the panel to track the sun throughout the day to get the optimum charge. And especially critical on a day like today when there's a little bit of overcast, it's late in the fall, and it, uh, it takes a little bit more effort to get a full charge in the system. But the whole point here is I have plenty of battery power throughout the winter to power my QRP gear, my amateur radio equipment, reading lamps, and other things inside the house. With a relatively inexpensive, easy-to-use system, 
I don't know, just guessing at the top of my head, the price of the charge controller and the battery and maybe the panel itself, you can do something similar for well under $250. And uh, does Mother Earth a favor in that we're burning less coal to power our, our hobbies and our reading lamps? And it's fun and easy to do. But again, consult the NEC, National Electric Code, and other authoritative sources and do it right.